Well, it's springtime again, and you've got your flats, and you are ready to go ahead and start planting. But you put your soil in, then you got to poke every individual hole, and then you got to put your seed in individual holes, and then you got to go ahead and cover it up. And you're just wondering, how in the world can I help to speed this process up? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, and the who, what, when, where, why, and how we can better to make your planting better. Let's get started. Well, in our last video, we went ahead and showed you how to make the holinator. So that way, you can go ahead and very efficiently go ahead and put holes in your flat. But you take a look at yourself and go, you know what? I really don't have an entire flat that I need to make holes for. All I've got is a small little six pack. So, you just need six little holes. But, let's say you've got multiple six packs that you've got to do again and again. And you don't want to make hole after hole after hole. Because, let's face it, you use your pencil. That was okay. It kind of worked, but you know, it got tired after a while. The wood got soggy. Wasn't really working for you. So, you tossed it. You decided, hey, let's use something metal. So, you've got the screwdriver. It's got a nice handle. It's working. It's great. Cool. But then your buddy says, hey, I got to borrow a screwdriver. Can I borrow it? So, you go, yeah, sure. Why not? You borrow the screwdriver. But then you realize, oh no, my buddy's borrowing my screwdriver. I don't have another one because, you know, I'm the weirdest guy in the world and I only own one screwdriver. So you look around and decide, what in the world can I use to make my holes? So you, because you're a connoisseur and you like the finer things in life, you have your wine cork nearby. So you go ahead and take that and you're making your holes. There's a way you can do it. You can go ahead and make little holes with the six pack. So, you've got the big daddy, here is now it's mini me, little brother. So that way you can easily make holes in the six pack. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get started. So, you've seen our large press measured out to the 72 cell count where you can make holes for an entire flat. And that makes it really great, simple, and quick. But, what happens if you don't have a 72 cell pack that you're planting out and you just have a six cell pack? Well, there's no point in using that entire giant press to fill out the entire thing if you know have six. So that's what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a little six pack cell method. So we just happen to have some scrap wood from that other project that we did. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and take this and very quickly we can measure out a little press board that will allow us to do that. And these measurements don't really need to be precise, but they can all go ahead and be straight. So we're gonna go ahead and see about a size of board that we need. We're gonna throw that little six cell pack off and we're gonna go ahead and mark it. Now we've got this that is ready to go ahead and cut. And because we already know the dimensions that we need, while we're cutting, we can save time to drill at the exact same time. So because we're making a hole press we and we want to make it like that, we can measure this out and mark little holes. But because you can measure it, do the diagram to make it so that you can center your six little holes to press it. Well, since we already have our commercial large tray, we can do the exact same thing like we did with the big one. We're going to go ahead and make certain that we've got it centered on our board. We're gonna place it over it and we're gonna measure out our little holes. So that way we can not only drill it, but we're gonna go ahead and place it to where it will be best to make our seed starting holes. So now that we have all of that marked out, as you can tell, they may be a little bit faint, but they're nice centered by using that as a template. We've got it good. So because this dowel is a 3 8 dowel, we're gonna go ahead and take a drill bit that is going to be just that exact same size or even slightly smaller so we can push this through and then go ahead and glue it in. We're gonna go ahead and drill and we'll go to that point. Well, we have our little six pack drilled. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take our standard 3 8 wooden dowel that we've chosen to use for our hole puncture from the top and we're going to go ahead and measure it against our little packet so that way we can see how big we want our pegs of how long to go in. Now with most seedlings it's not so much 
with this of how deep can we go, it's how deep do we want to go. Now with most seeds you're looking at a standard of being between a quarter inch to a one inch deep method. So what we've chosen to do as a nice medium is I'm going to go ahead and cut one inch pegs deep. So that way when we go to take our unit and stomp it into our method with a one quarter inch board and a one inch peg, it's going to give us a potential depth of three quarters of an inch. Now that's going to be a nice general meeting ground between the two for the most part with this. That's why we've chosen to that particular depth. So that way we can get a three quarter inch peg in order to make our holes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll be back. First we started with our little board so that we could do that. We then went to our little six cell pack so we could measure it. We decided to go with the 3 8 wooden dowel and then we decided to go with a one inch peg. And that's exactly what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've cut a one inch peg. So that way when we go to place it in, we can go ahead and add a little bit of wood glue. And just because it's such a tight snug fit, we're going to go ahead and use a little rubber mallet with the glue so that we can pound it into it. That way, it will allow us to get a real nice snug fit. So, we're going to go ahead and take our wooden dowels that we've cut. As you can see, I've got all of them cut and ready to go. So, we're going to get those glued up, ready to go, and then we're going to move on to the next step from there. Well, we've got the plugs all cut up, and we've glued them in, and that drying time is now over. As you can see, it went relatively well. Not all the pegs went in perfectly straight, but that's simply because I did not take the time to perfectly set them with a ruler. But for our purposes, it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. It will be just fine. And there's a little bit of glue in it. So before we go to the next step, I'll probably take a small knife or something and clean those up. That has nothing to do with the functionality of this board. It just has to do with cleaning it up to make it a little bit better. Then, I didn't perfectly set these pins as I was driving them in with the hammer, so I'll probably take a small sander and just level the back of it just so it's as even of a surface as possible. Once we get to that point, I'm going to go ahead and take a polyurethane material or stain and I'm going to go ahead and cover this entire board with it. The reason why I'm going to do that is so that way I can extend the life of this board because I am working in a high moisture environment by making it water resistant it will allow me to get much more life out of this guy. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back from that point. Well we have gone ahead, we've got the pegs in. We've got them all stationed up. We went ahead and sprayed a polyurethane lacquer on it just so it could be a little bit more weather resistant. Or water resistant, I mean. It's not gonna be entirely waterproof, but it will help this little guy to significantly increase its resistance to water in dealing with the high moisture situations that it's gonna be in. And now we are ready to go. But yet, <sighs> That could get a little cumbersome all the time. Hmm. I wonder what we're missing. Hmm. Oh, I know. Now that is a much more usable press. We've got ourselves a small little cheap handle that we purchased at a big box store. It is a light duty handle, but it will easily do the trick. So now we can easily grip the handle as we go to press holes into it. So we have the six holes been fully laminated we've just used a simple bolt and nut system to secure it onto the handle and we can easily press it into our six cell pack now let's go ahead and see it in action and as you can see it went ahead and made six nice little holes through the indentation so now that way we can easily add our seeds and as you can tell it enters it in just about a half inch the perfect depth that we have for our holes so now we can very easily go ahead and utilize that little cell six patch for the things
Thanks for joining us this episode as we went ahead and take a look at how to make Mini Me the Mini Holinator. And so that way as you're trying to plant little six packs, you can make your time much more efficient. So rather than having to plant six pack after six pack after six pack, try to make holes with your finger, screwdriver, or even your connoisseur wine cork to be fancy. It will help to significantly improve your efficiency as you're planting your plants, whether it's for spring, summer, or even the dead of winter in your greenhouse. And please remember, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to be up to date on these new episodes that we have coming out every week, don't forget to subscribe and click on that ringing bell button so that way you can continue to receive more episodes so we can learn from each other about more information about gardening and hydroponics in general. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.